Hey there. Thanks for tuning in. You ready for another episode of my Bigfoot sighting? All right then. Let's do this. Seen a bunch of run-down new horse towns Where the church is the backbone, loves in the bow And the five-string melodies groove in With the farmland rows where the roots run deep Beyond the noise of the busy streets Where the songs of the south are soothing When I hear the front porch picking down home rhythm ringing out I don't run from banjo music yeah. Tonight's guest is courtesy of the U.S. Bigfoot Patrol. If you've had a Bigfoot sighting and would like to report it to them, please call them at 865-383-0778. My Bigfoot sighting happened when I was 16, about three years ago. Uh, well, more towards four now. One of my friends, I will address him as friend A to, for privacy, uh, invited me and some others up to his place in Canada. And there was five of us counting me. We all was sitting there just camping. I can't remember the place name. It was, I think, mm, more towards the, it was close to the Great Lakes. I know that. But I can't remember the name of the place we went camping at. But we was all sitting up. We had all the tents ready. We had a foul going. We were all just joking around. We were start, we were thinking about playing D and D because friend day is a good DM. We like playing D and D with him. So while he was getting set up to do D and D, we was in like a circle formation. Uh, we all had uh, folding chairs. All of a sudden, one of my friends said, hey, guys, I look up and he's directly across from me, friend B. And he's pointing right at me. He's like, look. So I'm like, what, what is it? He's like behind you. I look at friend A turn, while I'm turning to the left. We look each other's eyes. We turn to look behind us and we we see this giant creature just walking through the tree line like just from one side to the other side of the trees and at the time friend day was the tallest he was like six foot two six foot three maybe this thing was at least a foot and a half higher than him like it had to be at least seven foot five to eight foot and it it put the field guard in all of us we were all scaled None of us knew what to do. None of us had any weapons to defend ourselves with. The best we had was a poker to deal with the file. And we didn't think that would help. So all of a sudden, friend A says, does it look injured? And I was confused. I looked, I'm like, what do you mean? He said, look at it. It's, it looks like it's injured. And I was like, well, yeah, he's right. Because at first I thought it was male, but they don't walk on two feet, to my knowledge. And we was like, well, okay. And I was thinking, well, maybe Bigfoot actually showed up or something, like in a jockey man. Or, and like, from all the accounts I've heard, like from all the stories I've heard, he walks more like a man. This thing was walking as if oh, it was an ape. Because you know how when an ape walks on two legs, they kind of sway from left to right, trying to deal with the weight. Well, this creature was doing the same thing. However, every time it stepped with its left foot, you could see it kind of went down a little bit further than with its right. So we honestly thought, well, maybe it was injured. Maybe it had just recently got over an injury. But this thing, it didn't even bother looking at us. It just kept walking. And all of a sudden, friend B, thinking it's a person, yells out, who's there? Come out. And this thing 
without even looking at us, you could heal it growling. And it scaled all of us to the point where, I mean, we was all, we've all been, we all have history of fighting. We all have history within the Air Force Junior ROTC. We all have history with hunting and like crazy experiences for each of us. But none of us have ever seen this. Now, this thing was probably mm, no more than like, I want to say like 15 feet away from me, the tree line was, and that's what the creature was. So, I mean, it was nighttime. However, the moon was out and we had a good sight. But this creature, and from working with people who have lots of muscle, I can tell you when there's a lot of muscle on a creature, open, it's got a lot of fur. Because, especially on primates, now I'm not a specialist on them, but I can tell you the muscle density by estimation. And that's because, like, on the forearm, the closer you get to the elbow, the bigger the forearm you see is. So the longer the how is, though, the bigger you can tell it was. And just by looking at how, I say that if I took my hands and I wrapped my, both my hands around that thing's forearm right at the elbow, that between my two middle fingers would have been more than an inch apart. So this thing, just from looking at its forearms, and I could, I I could tell you that that thing was probably able to lift a two hundred pound tree with one hand, and it might sound crazy, but like this creature had the muscles. This creature had the size and the environment to do so. It probably lift trees every day its whole life. But um, another thing was its legs. Now, I I do martial arts and I, I specialize in kicking. That's my specialty. It's kicking. I can lift with my legs almost three hundred and fifty pounds. This creature could probably double or triple my record, which I, I mean, when I was in high school just last year, this creature, well, my record was, it was 347.5 pounds. That was my record. This creature probably could double that with no problem. And I honestly thought that that was a person because I didn't think nothing in, in the forest had that kind of muscle density. So I thought it was just a person with a stuffed outfit, and it wasn't because of the way it walked. It was so heavy, he said. You could tell because when something is walking, it has to distribute its weight equally so that when it steps off of one foot, the other foot doesn't lose balance due to the weight. So... That's why I think this thing was injured is because it was like 350 to 400 pounds at minimum. And I, whenever it stepped, it leaned like a, like a gorilla or an ape would. And especially on its left leg, you could see that it would try to bounce itself when it would do a step. And then like it's right foot, it stepped quickle with its left. So, the second the right foot came up, it totally hit the ground again, almost like it had an injured leg. But just by looking at the thing's body, the head looked like a man. The fur was reddish, like brown, almost like a, almost like an orangish brown color. But it. It looked as if it was an ape trying to mimic a man walking, and it just didn't work. So, I honestly think it was a Bigfoot. So, we just immediately packed our stuff up. And, I mean, we left the tent, though. Friend A just threw water onto the fire, putting it out. And he dropped the bucket, 
we grabbed anything that we needed. We grabbed the food. We grabbed our generator that we had got in case something happened. And we just threw it all in the back of his pickup and we jumped in there and we just took off. He was hitting like maybe 85 down the trail, like down the Duke trail. And we just got out of there. It was freaky. And we went back there the next day, me and friend A, we went back there and we was looking around. We did, I don't know if it was maybe another animal, maybe the same creature, or maybe some people, but our tents were destroyed. Like, that was a tent maybe 10 feet in the to a tree. And then there was the other tent that we had. It had rips in it. Like, it, someone just took it and ripped it from one side to the other. And we was looking at each other, and I'm like, dude, I'm, what if we were in those tents when this thing did this he's like i know maybe he's like i think it might have been about i was like do they act like that do they sound like that he said no and i'm like i don't know man let's just get out of here before that thing shows up again and he said yeah agreed so we grabbed anything we could when we was going on our way back he went by the uh self station or police station whatever you want to call it and he told them that a big creature had attacked our campsite. No one was harmed. And he would like to file a report of a possible person instead of an actual animal. Because he said, all we saw was a tall bipedal creature. The cops thought, well, maybe a, maybe a bunch of kids just wanted to scare you guys. He, but they said, we'll check it out anyways. So we both went down statements and we left. We all went back down to, like, we all came back down to Virginia, and my friend called me, like, maybe a week later saying, hey, apparently more people have been reporting this item. I was like, well, what have they seen? They say it's Bigfoot. And I was like, oh, no way. Like, I mean, I, I don't believe in every story I hear on Bigfoot, but after seeing this creature... It's like, I don't know anymore. <laughs> it's like, I didn't think such a massive creature could show up. And when I say massive, I, I'm a fitness worker. I'm working to be a fitness trainer. I'm taking classes for now. And I could tell you, just from looking at things outline, it was probably 350 to 400 pounds of muscle on like a seven foot five to eight foot creature, if that thing would have came up on us, none of us would have stopped it. I don't even think if we had guns, we could have stopped it. And to this day, that thing haunts me. Like I, when I walk outside, I have to have a weapon just in case another creature shows up. But um, yeah, that was my first encounter of Bigfoot. And that's that's what got me into it. So I did a bunch of research, and that's the only explanation I could came up with was that we saw Bigfoot. Now, unlike the first one, I'm in I'm here in my home state, Virginia. I live south uh, west. Of, I live in the southwest. Like I'm far down there. I'm like. I'm about as southern as you can get in Virginia. But um, I went with my father to meet my uncle in Tennessee. And my uncle has a big, big field. This creature, I never seen it before. I've went there hundreds of times. I never saw a creature like this before. But me... My dad and my uncle was fishing. And at first, it was just like any other normal day. It was, it was us fishing in his catfish pond because he has two ponds, one for catfish and one for other fish. We was all fishing for catfish. We went catfish for 
to, we wanted to eat catfish that day. So we was hunting them. Like, well, we was fishing for them actually. It's a better way to say it. But um, this creature came out at, right as the sun was setting. And we didn't have enough room in the house. So I, I wanted to go and sleep outside because I like camping and we had bought a tent. So my dad's like, okay, well, if anything happens, just come back inside. We'll leave the door unlocked for you. I was like, okay. So I'm out there and I'm in this big field. I'm right next to his garden. He plants a lot of plants. I'm maybe 12 feet away from an old barn he had. And I'm right next to a bunch of baby bushes. So I'm sitting there just trying to fall asleep. I collected me a few berries to eat until I fell asleep. And I'm just sitting there reading a book, trying to doze off. And all of a sudden, this echo, I guess you could say, just came out of nowhere. It it almost sounded like someone imitated a monkey, like, who, who, ha, ha, or like deep or more like with an echo. And it, it sounded like, it sounded like almost Vin Diesel or somebody was sitting there doing it with how deep the voice was. And I mean, this creature walked up to my tent. Now I had my tent closed almost all the way. I left the top open just so I could see to the house in case something happened. I remember seeing a hand grab that opening. Now, this was probably stupid of me, but I freaked out. I screamed. I grabbed my pocket knife and I just flicked it open and I stabbed him right on his finger. I stabbed him on his, like on the knuckle of his middle finger. And you could hear this thing scream for miles. It screamed, pulled its hand back. The knife got caught on the tent and got knocked out of his knuckle from the tent. And all of a sudden, I could hear my dad and my uncle screaming. And my uncle said, get down. All of a sudden, a loud bang just went off. And I remember seeing that thing's silhouette run back by my tent. I immediately climbed out and... I literally put my hand in blood. So somebody shot the thing that was at my tent. I looked over at the house. My uncle has one of his rifles. He had a 308 rifle. And he quickly tossed it to me when I got over there and said, take this. He handed my dad a shotgun and that shotgun That thing is a 12 gauge. It has brass rounds, brass slug rounds. If anything was going to take that thing down, it was probably this. And it was giving me flashbacks to when I went to my friends. But who scary to see what happened. We start walking out though. We're no more than three or four people feet apart of each other's and we started hearing stuff beat on trees just you heard the constant beating of the trees and my dad said for me to hang back and watch the backs so i went up into the barn where there was a little lot and i just sat there and i i closed the stairway door and i kind of put a I put like a few baskets on it that I could kick off if I needed to. And they're walking towards the edge of the field opposite the house. Well, as they're walking, we heard something scream. I turned to look back at the house 
and probably no more than four or five feet away from the porch was again another creature looks like the one that i described before it was tall it was muscly it was it was just threatening and it was going towards the house as if it was going to go in i panic i quickly grabbed the 308 and i i took aim i'm not the best aim i went to shoot i missed i hit like right off to about maybe half a foot away from him, six inches away from him. He turns around. He's looking at me. He has these oranges, yellowish eyes. And at first, he starts to walk to me. Then he picks up the pace. He's getting faster, faster. And then he's in an all-out sprint at me. My father was yelling for me to run. I'm freaked out. I'm like, I missed. I missed. So I quickly. Now, this thing is a bow action 308 round. And so I put the 308 round in there. I got, I loaded it and I took aim again and I shot. This time I didn't even aim very much. I just looked to the scope, saw it, and I pulled the trigger. I remember seeing through the scope blood. So I hit. I don't know where I hit, but I hit somewhere else. And all I saw was this creature picking up the speed like it was mad. It was getting angry. So I dropped the gun. And all of a sudden, I see that thing lift one hand up. And he didn't even go through the barn. He just reached up, grabbed the second floor. Because those openings on both sides of the bonds on the second floor, he just grabbed onto it with both his hands and started pulling himself up. And that's when I seen it. It wasn't monkey face, like a human or monkey face. Brown fur. It it stunk. Like I almost want to call it the skunk man because it's not like a skunk. But It looked like a Bigfoot, like the generic Bigfoot. It was brown, red with yellowish eyes, a human or monkey top face. And I just ran the opposite way. I went the opposite way and I jumped off the other side. I landed on my feet. I th- I'm pretty sure I spun my ankle when I landed because I didn't land perfectly. So I'm limping away from this thing. And I look back and that thing is sitting there in the second floor and it, it's just looking at me and I'm just running. Like I'm running as fast as I can. I'm limping as fast as I can. And I get, I get over to my dad and my uncle. My uncle pulls out a Winchester sidearm and he just starts taking salt after salt after salt. And I'm pretty sure he hit one or two of them. This creature falls. It actually falls. It lands on its face on the ground. And it starts to get up. My dad pushed me to the side, got closer, and that thing got up. He put a brass slug round into its torso. Like clear the day into its torso. He was maybe three, four feet away from that thing. And he put a round into it, knocked it on its rear end, and then we all ran. We booked it around, like we looked at as far as way to the what left of us as we could, and we just took off towards the house. While we're running, my uncle was trying to load his Winchester again because he, he started every bullet he had in that thing. And he's finally got it loaded. And he turns around and he stopped. I turned around and I thought it was gone. Whatever it was, it was gone. We didn't see any wells. My dad yells for us to come on. So we 
run inside and they shut the door, they locked the door. My uncle's little chihuahua is barking up a storm as if he wanted to go out there and fight the thing himself. And it's this thing just, I don't know how something so big can be so fast that it like basically vanishes. I thought I was dreaming, but no. The next day, my uncle and my dad asked me how I was doing and asked me if what, like, what I saw when that thing was close to me. I was like, so I wasn't dreaming. They said, no, we saw it too. And I'm like, okay, well, what do we see? My dad said, I think it was some kind of barrel. My uncle looked at him like, are you crazy? That was no barrel. That was Bigfoot. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. there's no way. That, like, there's no way that this could be a barrel. And I don't think this could be Bigfoot because not even Bigfoot is that powerful, is he? My dad shot him with a brass slug round from a 12 gauge. And this thing, the best it did was put it on its own and gave us a few seconds to run. This thing got shot from like three or four feet away by that 12 gauge in the chest. And it didn't die. It just got knocked down. So it's like this thing just said, you know what? You all are just picking at me with a little bit of pain. And then that 12 gauge is basically his way of saying, oh, well, that hurt. All right, I'm leaving. I'm out. And none of us even realized it until we started running away. And we were halfway to the house. That, that thing was gone. But um, that was the last time I ever saw a Bigfoot. Well, that's it for tonight's show. If you've had a Bigfoot sighting and would like to be a guest, please go to mybigfootsighting.com and let us know. Thanks for listening. Have a great night. Seen a bunch of run-down no-horse towns Where the church is the backbone, loves in the bow And the five-string melodies groove in With the farmland rows where the roots run deep Beyond the noise of the busy streets Where the songs of the south are soothing When I hear the front porch picking down home rhythm ringing out I don't run from banjo music yeah.